repeat for us. <laughs> We've been uh, travelling around a little series that I call Don't Get So Emotional. <coughs> Maybe you're somewhere between uh, happy and sad today. We have lots of emotions, lots of experiences. Uh, we can choose to react in a certain way or we can choose to not react in a certain way. It's the last week in our current message focus. Up on the screen there it says, don't be afraid, just believe. This is the astonishing invitation Jesus offers a man whose daughter just died. All hope seemingly with her. Faith even believes in the darkness. Don't be afraid, just believe. There are some things I'm believing for right now that are hard, things that are difficult. I'm believing not because my faith is strong, but the one in whom I place my faith is. Maybe we need to get emotional. What or who is God calling you to believe for? Or to believe in? Or to believe again? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Just believe. Join with me in prayer. Father God today. Whatever we're feeling, whatever we're experiencing, Lord, help us to believe. Help us to trust in you. Help us to be people of hope. When things are hard, when things are confusing, when we get all emotional and upset and disappointment, Lord, bring your hope and healing and your joy. Let us not be afraid, but let us believe. In Jesus' name, amen. Believe Jesus still saves. Believe there will be an answer. Believe for the better outcome. Believe there is a way forward. In Mark 5, 35 and following, while he was speaking to her, messengers arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. They told him, your daughter is dead. And there's no use troubling the teacher now. But Jesus overheard them and said to Jairus, Don't be afraid, just have faith. Or don't be afraid, just believe. Then Jesus stopped the crowd and wouldn't let anyone go with him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw much commotion and weeping and wailing, lots of emotion going on there. And he went inside and he asked them, why all this commotion and weeping? The child isn't dead, she's only sleeping. And if you know the story, her life is restored. I want to speak to somebody this morning who's carrying something alone. Maybe you're the provider for your family. Maybe you're dealing with something right now that isn't public knowledge. But daily it fills your mind. The why, the how, the what next, the what for. Jesus was carrying something alone. Not only the news of John's death, but also the potential of, of his ministry. Jesus' ministry and influence was increasing. John had, John had just lost his life. And don't forget that he was his cousin. And we read about this in, in Matthew 14, 10 to 14, up on the screen there for you. So John was beheaded in the prison and his head was brought on a tray and given to the girl who took it to her mother. That's horrific. That's horror. Isn't it? Like, we just, oh, turn the page, next verse, you know. <laughs> Let's sit with that for a while. Later, John's disciples came to Jesus. Sorry. Came, later, John's disciples came for his body and they buried it and they went and told Jesus what had happened. 
happened. As soon as Jesus heard this news, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. He needed time. Time to grieve. Time to process. But the crowds heard where he was heading and followed on foot from many towns. Jesus saw this huge crowd as he stepped out from the boat and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. You can be getting news in one ear and bad news in the other. Learning how to balance this is the essence of faith. Are you carrying a blessing from God in one hand and doubts, questions, concerns, worries in the other? Jesus goes away and they find him. He needs to be alone to grieve and to process all that has just taken place. John has just been beheaded and his head delivered upon a platter and this was his cousin. His cousin is dead. Hello Jesus, here we are. Hello Jesus, we want to be healed and fed and blessed. Come on Jesus, do your stuff. We've heard about what you can do. Come on. This is like the in-laws coming to visit you while you're still on holiday. Or that annoying friend. We didn't think you would mind. We thought we'd just pop in and join you. But Jesus, he looks up. He looks up and sees his crowd of 5,000 or more. And he has compassion on them. He saw them. He didn't just see them as a crowd. He saw them with compassion. God knows what you're facing. God knows what you're feeling. God knows what this week has been like. What you didn't want to do, what you didn't want to say, what you didn't want to face. But he looks up and he sees you. And he sees us with compassion. Compassion for a man's daughter, compassion for a, a crowd of individuals. He sees you. He knows you are hungry. He knows you are hurting. This simple, profound faith that God wants you to hear today, He sees the one. He sees you. I pray that that might be all you might need today. To know that God sees you and has compassion on you. During the week I read this. Your love for God is not measured by how often you go to church. Your love for God is not measured by how high you raise your hands when you are singing. It's not about how many times you read the Bible each week or whether you cross yourself or not or whether you pray for hours every day. To the degree those things help you become more loving towards your neighbour, then those are good. But to the degree they keep you from loving others, they stand between you and a right relationship with God and should be stopped. What are we giving our time and energy to? In Luke 10, 33, 34, it's the story of the Good Samaritan, maybe familiar to many of you. But a Samaritan, surprise, surprise, as he travelled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds and poured on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey and brought him to an inn and took care of him. 
He sees the one. The one in need. Do we see the one in need? Or are they just another interruption to our day? If you remember, it was the religious people that passed by. God oh, had to go to that meeting, got to go to that, do that thing, read that Bible, do that study, attend that meeting, do that church thing. Do we see the one in need? Or are they just another interruption to our day? To where we are going and what we need to do, because oh, our Christian thing is more important. Are they there to mess up our day? Will we take pity on them and care for them? Or will we just pass by? Pass them by? Or are we the one who is hurting? Are we the one on the roadside, in need, waiting, hoping, praying for help? As the sea of faces pass us by. Waiting for someone to look upon us with compassion. Waiting for someone to come and help. Know this this morning, you are not just part of the crowd. 1 Peter 5, 7, up there for you. Cast all your anxiety on Him. Because He cares for you. He cares for me. He cares for us. Do you know what we do with this verse? We say to ourselves, surely God doesn't mean me. Surely God doesn't mean me. Well, friend, yes, he does. Or we give it to God and then we go and pick it up again. Let him carry it. Let him have it. One of the other songs we sang this year was Waymaker. Even when I don't see it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Waymaker, miracle worker. You never stop working. When you feel isolated, hurt and alone, God is Near. God is near. You are not alone by that roadside. You're not alone at that kitchen table. You're not alone driving in your car and tears running down your face. For God sees you. In the book of Philippians chapter 4, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let his peace come. Let his peace reign. Let his peace fill you today. Give him your worry, give him your anxiety, give him your fear, give him your concern, give him your question, give him your doubt. For he doesn't see you as a crowd. He sees you and loves you. He sees us all, one by one. No storm. God won't bring us through. No obstacle God won't help you overcome. No enemy that God won't defeat. 
No heartache God won't mend. When I say Jesus, the very mention of his name shatters the darkness and calms my soul and breaks through the doubt. It's not always in your successes, but sometimes in your struggle, that God will show you who you really are. He saw us. He saw us and had compassion on us and healed us. You're not carrying it alone. He sees you. God bless you. Amen. And we can trade our sorrows. There you are. Amen.